I bid you welcome. I welcome you to my house. Welcome to my house. Welcome to my home. Hello Horror Hounds, welcome to my Horror House. Welcome back to my Horror House. It's been a bit of a while, thank you for bearing with me. And while I was taking a little bit of a break from YouTube, this big freaking Exorcist trilogy deal announcement is made and I just <laughs> needed to talk about it. I don't have a, a hot take about it. I have a lot of thoughts, a lot of them conflicting. I really want to know what what you think about this. Obviously, I want to hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Exorcist fans have been burnt quite a few times, but there are some there are some gems in there as well. And then it's the the people involved. Mm -hmm. I guess your opinion on whether this is excellent news or not is going to depend a lot on your opinion on Halloween 2018. But let's dive into it. Let's, let's see what the, the headlines are, what, what scant information we know. Universal and Peacock, which I've learned is an NBC streaming service, have reportedly spent at least, and probably in excess of $400 million for a new Exorcist trilogy. I'm a little bit fuzzy on whether it's only the first one that's going to go to theatres and two and three are going to be on the streaming service or what. Um, the banner headline sort of beneath that is that Ellen Burstyn is to reprise her role as Chris McNeil, mother of Reagan, the possessed child in William Friedkin and William Peter Blatty's seminal The Exorcist. I mean, The Exorcist. The Exorcist. It is... It's up there sort of... I was going to say it's untouchable with, with Jaws, but Jaws has had a load of sequels as well, and so is The Exorcist. Nothing's untouchable anymore. I would say that um, perhaps remaking The Exorcist or remaking Jaws might... Is still perhaps a step too far even for Hollywood. Uh, but here we go. This is definitely set in the Exorcist continuity. It's definitely going to act as a legacy sequel to The Exorcist, just as um, David Gordon Green did for Halloween 2018. What I don't think this one will do, which Halloween did, was trash all the sequels and acted as a direct sequel to the 1978 original John Carpenter's Halloween. Green has said that uh, he actually quite likes... Um, all of the Exorcist uh, sequels and prequels and the like, and he's not intending to, to sort of retcon any of those out of existence. I don't think he's probably going to allude to any of them either. What we do know is that the film is going to star Leslie Odom Jr., who I'm unaware of. I know he's in Hamilton. I tried to watch it. I got about two thirds of the way through Hamilton. It's long. And he plays... The father of a possessed child, desperate for help, he tracks down Ellen Burstyn's character, Chris McNeil. Hmm, I have thoughts. If your daughter contracts a rare disease, do you go to uh, your doctors and then the specialists in that field, or do you track down the mother of a girl who previously had that disease what, over, uh, well over 40 years ago? I don't, und I don't understand the thinking. Now, maybe David Gordon Green and his team have got a really good idea as to why this character might do that, rather than just get an alumni from the original film back in. It also immediately, when you see Ellen Burstyn, apart from thinking, well, she's brilliant, she's a phenomenal actress, great, there's going to be some class to this, at least while she's on the screen, you instantly think, well, what about Linda Blair? The fact that they've announced this as a, as a trilogy is setting off a lot of ding a ling a ling a lingers We've all been stung by Universal's dark universe. Let's get that picture of... Javier Bardem and Tom Cruise. Yeah, we're going to have a dark universe and this is the start of it. Dracula Untold. Oh no, not that one. Uh, the Mummy. 
oh no, we're not going to do it anymore. Just at least David Gordon Green had the good sense with Halloween 2018 to make that film, put it out. Once it was a smash, then him and Danny McBride said, you know, we do have, we have ideas for a second and third. We can make this a trilogy. It just, it gets up my nose when people say, well, this is a pre-planned trilogy. This is a pre-planned universe. Everything needs to instantly make a billion dollars. Otherwise it's a failure. And then we're going to just trash all of our plans. I, I guess when you're announcing that you've spent $400 million on this property, it doesn't take a calculator wizard to work out Hmm, they're going to want more than one film for their return on this. So one of your instant thoughts as an Exorcist fan is Ellen Burstyn, great. What about Linda Blair? And my deep, deep concern is that Linda Blair is going to be an end credit stinger Marvel Universe style for the next movie. I mean, let's be honest, Linda Blair's definitely going to be in one of these unless she unless she absolutely doesn't want to. Linda Blair is going to be in one of these movies. And a trilogy based around beating the devil. So, oh, what is, oh, is, is the middle one going to be the Empire Strikes Back of the three and it's going to be a bit of a downer ending, but then the, the priests muster for the final showdown in the third movie. Are they going to be three separate stories of demonic possession uh, that might be more interesting to me I, I, I'm not that interested in finding out what Chris McNeil is up to these days let's be honest and the absolute mastermind behind um, this universe of stories William Peter Blatty had the absolute good sense for his official sequel the novel Legion and then his movie adaptation Exorcist 3 to understand the story isn't the little girl anymore. The story isn't that family. They've been the, the focus for, for this purpose, as is explained in the book and the film, to spread despair, to make us despair. The demon got what it wanted and was roundly beaten, but the sacrifices had to be made for that outcome. Blatty completely understood that a sequel or, or another story set in that world had to focus on different characters. Characters that were in the periphery of the original, Lieutenant Kinderman, absolutely. But a different mystery, a different theological mystery, a, a, a different problem spiritually to overcome. And this leads me to my other area of slight concern, uh, which is that William Peter Blatty is, is not going to be involved unless they intend to employ a Ouija board. Blatty is the original creator, is the unique voice of this world. And the concerns are ones of spirituality, faith, uh, good and evil. Um, are humans inherently evil or do they strive to be good? These, these struggles, um, uh, theological knotty problems, um, are the beating heart of Blatty's stories and every other film since The Exorcist, be it an Exorcist sequel or prequel that's not Exorcist 3 under the guardianship of William Peter Blatty, seems to have taken the pea soup vomit, the levitating and, and the head spinning and run with those threads all the fancy clothes and, and, and none of the muscle and sinew that those clothes house. And that's a problem. The closest we've had, I would argue, is Paul Schrader's uh, Dominion, the prequel to The Exorcist. That was a little more thoughtful. It did have considerations about occupying military forces, uh, guilt, uh, sin and the like, its execution, it, it didn't It didn't have the, the, the sparkle of Blatty. It didn't have Blatty's humour, which is, which is prime in The Exorcist and Exorcist 3 Legion. It had a very interesting take on the demon uh, in, in Dominion of taking the, the crippled boy and as the possession takes hold, he becomes more and more perfect. 
uh, and then the demon finally giving a young Merrin the chance to actually, you know, the temptation, the chance to go back and, and change that moment from his past. The Exorcist TV series worked as a direct sequel to The Exorcist. And I didn't watch it for a long time because I thought that that was really gimmicky. And a friend persuaded me to watch it and I was won over. And, but, and there were bits of that series that I loved and bits of that series that I didn't love. I adored the way that they treated possession in series one as a kind of uh, grooming. You take a, a, a disaffected uh, a child and then you have someone at their side and in their ear, I'll be your friend, I'll, I'll, I'll help you, I'll get you through this. A real grooming child abuse metaphor. And then in uh, series two became a little bit more the conjuring. Uh, and I wasn't sure over both of those series about, you know, the super cabal of possessed people who were trying to infiltrate the Vatican and kill their Pope. And These things work when Blatty handles them on the level of the personal. They are attacks on, on someone's psyche or on, on the psyche of the group around that person. It, it, it is to make us despair. It is uh, to make us in that world to turn away from God, to, to lose our faith in the existence of, of good or a driving good force. And I worry that a $400 million trilogy of exorcist movies by the guy that turned Michael Myers into a, a, a head stomping spree killer is going to be an awful lot of uh, contortionists and, and bone cracky uh, noises and uh, swearing and crawling on uh, uh, up walls and on ceilings and stuff like that and, 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 and not the, the spiritual heart to it. I really, really, really hope I'm wrong because these, these things, these films are happening now. Um, the, the, the money's spent, so whether it goes to a streaming service eventually or not, or just quietly goes away to die, uh, we're going to get them. And <laughs> since The Exorcist, my, uh, Exorcist 3 aside, um, has there really been a good exorcism, a good possession uh, movie? I guess coming in through the back door... Um, Wreck was a, was a cool uh, sort of uh, take on that. Wreck and Wreck 2 that I was completely not expecting. Are not most of them the body distorting, contortionist, bone cracking uh, whistles and, and, and bells that The Exorcist really isn't. A tiny portion of that film has just been blown up into... This is what possession movies are. This is what uh, exorcism movies are. <laughs> that was, <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that's a that's a small portion of that film. You might you you might as well say that if if you're going to go with that, then all exorcism films uh, really need to involve an archaeological dig in Iraq because that took up as much time in in The Exorcist as as all of, all of that stuff did. I, I really want them to be good. I just worry it's going to further trash. Uh, I'm, the Exorcist will still exist. The Exorcist 3 will still exist. Blatty's novels, The Exorcist and Legion, will still exist. The unofficial third uh, movie in Blatty's trilogy, The Ninth Configuration, will still exist, as will the novel it was adapted from, Twinkle Twinkle Killer Kane. So, who knows? I'm going to stop gabbing now. Please let me know what you think, uh, especially if you're more optimistic about it, so you can maybe get me jazzed up. But if you want to uh, also be uh, miserable like me and commiserate what you think is probably going to be a car crash at least <laughs> join me in the comments and let me know i'm not alone or maybe there's maybe there's some middle ground maybe eh, maybe it'll be all right maybe there'll be we'll get three all right possession movies <laughs>